Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's time for Impact Weekly. Uh, and today uh, we have another question. And um, this one is customer KPIs versus user KPIs. Which one to prioritize? Are they both needed? Is there a need to differentiate? Okay, interesting. We get a lot of questions around KPIs. And maybe... On- if you don't think about it too much, you think KPIs, that's just this or that, right? But actually, when you open the Pandora box of customer success KPIs, you can actually talk about a lot of things, right? Yeah, and you can have two people talking about what seems like the same thing, only to realize that we're actually talking about different things because there's a lot of confusion. And I think we need to start high level here and and level set on a few things before we really jump into it. So yeah, yeah what are we talking about when we talk about KPIs right. for customer success? Uh, and the question here, they are asking for customer KPIs versus user KPIs. Yeah. So th- this seems like such an easy question, right? Until you yeah. go, wait a minute, what do you mean customer? Right. Do you mean the customer company? From their perspective? Right. Or do you mean the way that we look at the customer from our perspective, maybe even from an account standpoint? Yeah. And the answer is yes. <laughs> I, exactly. Right? I think all of these things are accurate when we're thinking about customer KPI. I yeah. think we can break it down a little bit here, make that, do some differentiation like they asked in the question, right. and which I think, yes, is required to differentiate and help make sure, again, that we're all on the same page here when we're talking about this stuff. So I think, let's start with the customer level. Talk to us about that. All of these things fall under customer success, but I think what a lot of times is missed is this from the customer perspective. What are we measuring and what are we looking at from the customer sense? And uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's, and, and as, as we talk about a lot of times in this podcast, I think it's probably the most important thing to track. For sure. And, yeah, and if you've listened to any of our other episodes of the podcast, you will know that we always talk about customer goals. Really, the only reason that a customer is doing business with you, and this is critical to under, understand and remember, the only reason that you exist in their world is for them to achieve their goals. Now, you may not know what their goals are, but rest assured that they are, in fact, trying to achieve an objective and they have a time frame in which they're trying to achieve that. From their perspective, they have a goal. Your product is a means to an end for them to, and the end is to achieve that goal. Now, you can be a part of that. You can work to understand what their goals are. And and as we say in Impact Academy, if you are a part of that, goal attainment, your customer is going to see you as more valuable, right? If they figure out how to achieve their goal on their own using your product, you as a CSM, as a CS organization, and just maybe even you as a product are going to be seen as less strategically valuable. You're going to just be another tool that they use. So your customers always have goals. Mm. And I think when we're talking about customer centric KPIs, we're talking about customer level KPIs. That's where I go to. We have to know what the customer is trying to accomplish. That's the main thing, which also just, we were talking about this before we started recording. We don't really refer to those things as KPIs. We talk about it as a customer goal Yeah, and the things that they need to do to reach that goal. We don't talk about as being metrics that roll up to that KPI. We talk about them as being key events or progress milestones or what have you. I think that's just something to something to keep in mind when you're when you're talking about these things. If somebody's talking about customer KPIs, they might be talking about something different 
Yeah. Because we generally just talk about customer level things as goals. And then differentiation between customer KPIs, in this case, we're saying like customer centric things versus user centric yeah. things like KPIs or whatever. The difference here is that the customer company has a goal and then the users, which aren't just users, they're different stakeholders in the process. Mm. They probably have their own goals or at least whatever they're doing should be in service of the customer company yeah. goals, right? So it all starts with goals. And so from the customer side of things, the customer perspective, it's all about, it really should be looked at as, as something that's goal centric. Yeah. I think that's where we want to start with this. And then, but we can, of course, I think also just to, to touch on that from an internal point, you, when you talk KPIs, it's more around what we call customer success management, not to, I think we should talk about that, but uh, also in this, uh, in this sense that we want to follow up on, on some specific KPIs, operational KPIs also on the team, uh, the customer success managers and so on. Uh, so we understand what the customer's goal is, the customer company. Mm -hmm. We understand that the individual stakeholders may have goals that differentiate a little bit from the customer company's goals. Right. The, the stakeholders, of course, want the customer company to achieve their goals, but they themselves may have their own goals that have more to do with their role, may have more to do with politics and looking mm. good and oh, yeah. to their peers and things like that. And we have to understand those things. And ultimately, the complexity of the customer sort of drives that the need to differentiate between customer and user metrics. I think smaller yeah. companies are less complex. Mm. And generally, you have user-level goals, and those are usually more tightly aligned with the company goals. And that's just something to keep in mind. If you right. have a small company, the individual stakeholder just has generally more of an impact on the outcome that, that the company wants to achieve. And so the individual stakeholders' goals are just tightly aligned with the company. And in a more complex setting, yes, the individual stakeholders want the company to achieve their goals. But individually, they may not have a lot of impact on the company achieving those goals. And so they might look to other things that they have more of an impact on. And like I said earlier, it's more about sort of their positioning inside the company, improving their political and social capital and standing. These things that you're like, what does that have to do with using my CRM? But rest assured, it does, right? Yeah. The sales leader wants to make sure that everybody sees them as, as successful and doing what they said they would do. And so the CRM, while helping the company achieve their revenue goals by mm. facilitating more sales, also is helping the sales leader look good. Right. And right. that's a really important uh, thing to keep in mind. So that, that distinction needs to be there from the customer side of things. And then on the customer success management metrics and KPI side, operationally, we need to be doing things that help ensure the customer company is going to achieve their goals and help ensure that the different stakeholders and the users are doing the things necessary to achieve those customer company goals as well as their own individual goals. Yeah. Operationally, and we will do things that will help them move forward. We will intervene when we yes. need to. We will do training. We will do all the things that we do as CSMs. That's where that kind of comes in. And then there's the account level right. KPIs and metrics. And this is where you really get into things that we refer to as KPIs and yeah. metrics. Talk about that for a little bit. Yes, of course. And um, this is where you have usually net revenue retention or, or something similar in place. You have some roll-up metrics for that uh, where you look at uh, expansion, you look at churn, contraction, uh, and you can do that on a, on a CSM level. You can do across yeah, different segments of your, of your customer base, and you can do that on individual customers as well. So that's where KPIs, I would say, is more, everyone is more familiar with that type of KPIs, and most businesses work through KPIs on account levels and uh, on 
yeah, individual contributors as well. This is why we wanted to start by separating things a little bit here and also, and now we maybe could go in a little bit more. If we start looking at going back to the question here again, customer KPIs versus user KPIs. So maybe we should talk a little bit about looking at it from this customer perspective, goal, the, what KPIs can we have in place here? And, and also maybe where, where do we see companies go wrong here? Yeah, where do you go wrong? <laughs> there, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong here. And I think the first thing, just frankly, that can go wrong is just not understanding what we just talked about, that yeah. there is a distinction between customer-centric, again, we don't call them KPIs, but things that are happening on the customer side and then things that, that we need to be looking at and measuring internally. Yes. So just understanding that there is a distinction there and if you go back to the question, customer KPIs versus user KPIs, which one to prioritize, if that distinction is made between customer-centric or customer-side um, measurements of success and then our own internal KPIs, they're not really things that you would prioritize. They're all necessary. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, a distinction does need to be made, but they're all necessary. And ultimately, everything is in service of helping the customer achieve their goal. So where do I think most people go wrong to start with? They just don't understand that there are customer side things and things that have to happen internally. And just understanding that as you do now, listener, <laughs> I think is going to really help you move right. forward in a meaningful way. Yeah. Daily active users, I, I think it's common KPI perhaps on the customer level. And uh, and just to put this in perspective, so if you measure that and, and it goes up, of course, maybe that's, if that's all you measure, you might think that customer now is doing great, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's necessarily not true unless you understand what, what this customer is trying to achieve, what their goal is. Look, the definition of customer success is when our customers achieve their desired outcome through their relationship with us. Desired outcome is made up of two things. One is their goal, and the other is their appropriate experience. Right. If I don't know what the customer's goal is, mm. I can't do customer success. Right. I just have to say it like that. Just, I'm not saying that to be provocative. I know you're working hard, but if you don't know what your customer's goal is, you're not really doing customer success. So really, everything starts there. Yeah. And this goes to, to what you were just talking about in terms of usage. Just being able to look at activity that a, that a customer is doing. So daily active users, is that a good metric? I don't know because there's no context there. Yeah. What is that activity that they're doing on a daily basis? What is that doing? Yeah. W what's that in service of? If yeah. I don't know what their goal is, then how do I know that the activity that they're, that they're doing on a daily basis is moving them in the right direction? I might look at that and go, oh, great, daily active usage is moving up. But in fact, what's happening is all of the people are logging in trying to figure out what to do. They can't figure out what to do or they're doing a bunch of stuff and it has no bearing on any business outcome. And so daily active usage could be going up and then all of a sudden it's going to fall off a cliff because they're mm -hmm. not achieving their goals and then they churn and I go, well, wait a minute, daily active usage was going up. So we have to have, we have to measure progress. Yes. We have to have usage data where we can. And as SaaS businesses, that usage data is almost always present. We don't, might not have access to it. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Yeah. But lack of data is usually not the issue in terms, at least at, a, at an enterprise level. Context yes. is everything. So our, is the activity that we're looking at, the activity that we're measuring, is that actually in service of the customer's goal. And if yeah. it's not, then it's meaningless activity or actually yeah. it does have meaning. It's just, it's telling us something else. It's telling us yeah. that they're doing a bunch of stuff, but they're not actually doing anything that's going to move them in the right direction. I think this is where we started out with here. Where do people go wrong? And I think not understanding the goals is one part. The other part is that they, they don't look at the, the right type of usage, or they don't use usage data in the right way. Start to deliver, we talk a lot about key events, 
key events being actually progress the customer, the user is doing in the platform in, on their way of achieving goals. Key events are indications, not the truth, but indications of a customer on their way on hitting a goal. So that type of usage is really helpful to monitor and track. I would say in most cases on user level that later becomes so user KPI that could be, that of course, aggregates into a customer KPI. So that type of usage is really effective uh, when you're trying to understand how things are going. Totally. But if you don't know where somebody's going, exactly. how can you know if they're moving in the right direction? So yeah. I think it's key events, sometimes generically referred to as progress milestones, but whatever it is, we need to know. And by mm. the way, we were talking about key events earlier and, and before we started recording, and it's so interesting. We probably know just organically what some key events are that would indicate whether our customers are moving in the right direction towards their goals. We just may not have that laid out. We may not have the appropriate instrumentation and monitoring for those things. And yeah. we know what those are. Yeah. So it's okay. If we know that, and then we know what the customer's goals are, we can bring those two things together very simply. We don't have to have full progress milestones mapped out for the entire journey. We don't have to mm -hmm. have all of the steps laid out. That ultimately, no. we want to get there to the extent possible. But if we mm. could just have a few key events that are on the way yeah. to ensuring the customer achieves their goal, that's a huge step in the right direction. And it's so much more valuable than having access to the most granular usage data because that data without that context is not going to be super helpful and can actually mm. send us down the wrong path. But I think that's a huge point here when talking where people go wrong. And and also, I think there was a question, or in the question, we there was a person asked about prioritization of customers versus user. And I think we we don't see it that way, right? No, I think when we're talking about customer versus user metrics or KPIs or however we want to talk about it, it's isn't about prioritizing one over the other. User activity, user metrics, whatever that is, is essentially going to roll up to or influence the customer metrics. Right. So you need them both. If you had to prioritize starting somewhere, then you would want to start with the customer goals, basically. Mm. We want to know what's the customer trying to achieve. Yeah. So we would want to start there. But... Then you immediately have to go to, okay, what needs to happen mm. in order for them to achieve that goal? So I guess we could prioritize coming up with these things, but in terms of operationalizing this, they're both important. You, you really can't have one without the other and be able to have an operation that's going to be functional and successful. But I think prioritization is interesting to look at if you look at users, because if you have, we talked about smaller customers, maybe they are have one or two, a few users, but then you have more complex customers that have multiple layers of users, perhaps. In that sense, user KPIs are, that's where you have to like look at different types of users as well. So you're talking what? You're talking admins, super users, champions, exactly. as well as just individual users. Of course, because I think everybody can relate to having an admin or super user leave or disengage with you versus like a main user or end user and the, the magnitude of difference there is between those in terms of, yeah, everything in that customer setup. So I think that's where you can... Definitely differentiate both because they play different roles in how they, the customer works, but it's also to be able to work in a more efficient way as customer success managers. So this is where you can start to prioritize. We basically look for points of leverage wherever yes. possible. And I'm going to probably spend, as a CSM, I'm going to spend more time working with an admin or a super user or a champion or influencer then I am going to be working with individual users because those, the admin, the, the super user, the champion, the influencer, whatever, they can 
that's leverage. They will be yes. able to get the individual users to do what we need them to do. And so I can spend my time working with a handful of people rather than working with all of the individual yeah. users. And it's just going to be much more effective. Also, mm. by the nature of who those stakeholders are, they're going mm. to be able to probably get the end users to, to take action better than I could anyway. That's why we want to look for those leverage points. And so I'm going yeah. to prioritize working with so those individual stakeholders over working with the individual users. So from a prioritization standpoint, that does apply here. Definitely. And I think also to wrap up a little bit here before we summarize is also, I think the person asking the question now is talking about customer versus user KPIs and how to think about that. But I think a more common situation is that you actually have very little KPIs at all on how your customers are performing from customer perspective. I think customer success managers, heads of customer success, you need to don't give up on having really good data on how your customers are doing. I think going back to our last episode, we talked a lot about how you get other teams behind you to support start to start deliver mm. to support customer success and i think a key thing here is really to advocate for you and why you need to have access to specifically usage data or all these type of data points that can help you have meaningful key events uh, on how things are going with uh, both your users and your customers yeah so episode 44 we talked about ensuring that other teams see customer success as important. And one of the things we actually didn't talk about in that episode was going to departments to, I think we touched on it, but to mm. get them to give you access to some of the data that you're going to need. So if you're in a situation where customer success is not necessarily looked at as vitally important, you may be cut off from access to the critical data that we would need to, to be able to understand what our customers are doing, what the individual users are doing. And like I said earlier, lack of data is usually not the issue, at least at the enterprise level, at the company level. We have this mm. data. You just may not have access to it. And you slipped and said, start deliver. But you said that because as a vendor uh, that's, that sells a customer success management product, yeah. This is one of the challenges that you work with. Like yeah. Getting access to data so that mm. you can pull it into your system and and help CSMs make the right decisions on a daily basis working with customers. So yeah. you, you're speaking not as the CEO of a CSM software product, but as someone that deals with these kinds of data silos. Yeah. And the challenges that come in there and I think I know you're always a little bit reluctant to talk about Start Deliver because we don't want this to seem like a commercial, but you have relevant experience there. And I think it's important oh, yeah. to share that. Oh, but definitely. I, I feel very strongly for all these teams that are basically struggling, working in siloed systems and spreadsheets and basically chasing all these things and trying to put things together when they don't really have to. I definitely feel yeah, passionately about that, of course. It doesn't have to be that way, of course. So if you do run into that situation, go back and listen to episode 44, where we talk about ways to get other teams yeah. on board with customer success to see that it's important. And that might start to open up new data flows for you yeah. so that you can start making better decisions. But I think I'm glad you brought that up just in, because, again, the data is probably there. You just have to have access to it and advocating as a head of customer success, advocating for your team, advocating for the need to have access to this stuff is part of your job and probably a very large part of your job. And don't forget that. And don't just accept that mm -hmm. you're not going to have access to it. That's going to keep you from being as successful as you can keep your CSMs from being as successful as they could be. And ultimately it's going to keep your customers from being as successful as they should be. So, yeah. So with that, let's, let's wrap this up. Let's do that. What's our three things here? So I think number one, we have to understand the customer's goals. So if you're not doing goal discovery, 
that's where to start because everything is built off of that. And when you have that in place and when you, when you know the customer's goal, then of course you want KPIs, both on user level and customer level. But start somewhere uh, with a metric that really matter, matters uh, to the goal. I gave an example of key events. I think that's very powerful, uh, easy concept, powerful. And again, just to reiterate, don't accept operating in the dark. If, if the data is available somewhere in your company, it's your job to get access to it. If that's going to help ensure that we know where our customers are, where they're going, what they're doing, and where we need to intervene. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.